build faster with storefront UI. Aditya Patel from Hotwax is going to show you how you can leverage the UI library to accelerate your time to market, but also how you can reuse the components and how to put them to good use for your context. You know, customizing them a little bit, changing up here and there, and having used Storefront UI myself, I'm really interested to see what Aditya has to say about this. I hope you do too. Hello everyone, my name is Aditya Patel and welcome to my talk on building faster with Storefront UI. Let's start with problems we have to overcome to build faster. Implementing an e-commerce theme is probably the most frustrating part of any e-commerce implementation. If you're lucky, over the years you've built out, uh, you built out reusable e-commerce components that you use from one implementation to another. But maintaining and updating those usually requires a dedicated team and it's straight up unrealistic for freelance developers. So third party UI libraries should be the answer to this, but most of them out there are hard to customize for a variety of reason, reasons. In an ideal world, we have reusable components that are easy to maintain, but also have good tooling for both designers and developers alike, making, easy, making it easy for both teams to communicate while also reducing the effort required by both teams. Finding a component library like that, that has tools, good tooling for designers and developers is difficult. Then you have to work out a good developer handoff process or else designers go completely wild and leave developers in development hell. And then once you do find a good library, it probably only has simple components, also known as atoms. That's because they want to let you build components specific to your needs. So they're easy to theme, but they still require you to build out your own molecules and organisms, which are basically the more complex components that you actually use in your theme. And then on the other side, if you look at it from a designer's perspective, there's way too many free e-commerce themes out there. And probably none of them have a developer handoff process like SFUI, let alone a real component library to back it up. Uh, by the way, if you look closely here, you can see at number four, you have our theme sitting with a solid 1.6 thousand downloads right now. So to get an idea of what those components are that we have to build over and over again, here are four pages of industry-leading brands. So these are category pages, which are arguably some of the most important pages on any e-commerce site for conversion. And each one of these sites has had all of the money that anyone could want to spend on conveying a unique brand experience. Yet if we look closely with our component glasses on, you quickly see that all of these sites are actually largely built from the same components. I didn't pick them because they're similar, yet they all have a banner with some kind of value proposition like free shipping or buy online pickup in store. And then a header with a logo, a hamburger menu, a button to access your cart, and search, whether that be a simple search button or if somebody, if, as we can see here, Steve Madden's gone with, a full width search bar. Then there's a faceting section, and then there's also product cards put into a grid. And so here's just another way to look at those exact same components. A UI library with these components built in would be pretty helpful. So you don't have to continuously rebuild the same menu or the same product card over and over again. So these are the kind of components that SFUI has built in that generic libraries simply just don't have. SFUI has all the basic Atom components that you find in other UI libraries and need to build your own brand-specific one-off components. But more importantly, by being domain-specific, Storefront UI has components like Product Card built in, giving anyone building a customer e custom e-commerce theme a significant major, a significant major head start. Since it's open source and backed by a vibrant community, the burden of maintaining an in-house UI library is also offloaded, reducing the amount of maintenance time and bugs you have to kill, while also opening up bandwidth for you to deliver more projects faster. Along with that, Storefront UI is updated with new e-commerce features frequently that you would otherwise have to plan and implement yourself to your own component library. 
if you ever want to go and check out the roadmap of FSFUI, uh, there's this Figma file managed by the core team with the current designs and upcoming developments. So let's talk about how you can customize these components to fit your brand specific needs. Because custom, being able to customize the look and feel of Storefront UI is important, or else everyone ends up with the same looking websites. Uh, kind of like when Material first came out, all webs, all apps on Android all of a sudden looked the same because they used the same Material theme. This is a problem that they actually spent, a, a Google spent a significant amount of effort to rectify in Material 2. Then there's also Bootstrap that has been a large reason why so many websites now have the same 12 column layout and all look so similar. So when thinking about customizing SFUI, I like to think about it in three tiers. Uh, there's one which is just the basic branding and styling. So that's stuff like border radius, shadows, and brand colors. Then there's customizing slots. So slots are a great way to replace the straight up the, the UI in components in specific spots. And then there's building whole new components using SFUI components. And we're gonna dive into each one of these uh, methodologies in the next few slides. So basic branding is the easiest. SFUI has an elaborate Figma file where you can quickly apply brand colors and styles to see what your website will look like on the default theme. To see those changes in action, you can use the upcoming theme file that Ashwari is working on in the community that will allow you to quickly and centrally update your website theme, kind of like a cookbook. That'll have uh, kind of like box shadows for small, for small, medium, and large components, and uh, elevation, stuff like that. So these are a few examples right here of what you can make a few atoms look like with minimal changes to HTML and just a few tweaks in CSS. Uh, just to be clear, um, the notification at the uh, bottom right here, the clear is actually a usage of a slot, which would otherwise be an icon. You can then use that slot to put in, I've used here, an SF text button. Uh, and then, but realistically, the basic coat of paint that you put on while branding isn't going to be enough. Uh, if you want to really change the layout and content of these components, you have to use the slots they provide. Slots are great, as I mentioned before, because they give you the freedom to write your own HTML, CSS, and completely override out-of-the-box UI without breaking anything most of the time. Again, I recommend, if you can, start with the Figma file, because it'll let you customize the components there like you would while developing, but it also lets you do that more rapidly and without losing the confidence that those components are gonna be available one-to-one -to, -one to your developers, to your development team. Uh, for the examples here, you can see there's the SF add to card component. Uh, but actually what we've done here is creating a omni-channel BOPIS scenario, basically. We overrode the SF button slot here and added our own pick up and store button. So that's the kind of customization that you would have a hard time doing with an, a component library that doesn't use slots. Uh, then on the right you can see there's another example of how we customize the SF card. Uh, basically we took the product title slot and we noticed we had a customer who wanted to not only show the product name but also show the brand it belongs to. So we just added another, we customized the slot, added another tag, uh, used I think H4 here, and just used the brand name right within it. And we were, this is great because we didn't have to start from scratch and build an SF card, uh, product card component that has a slot dedicated to a brand. We were able to use what already existed and run with it. And product card especially is really something that I think everybody should be using because it has great features like letting you change image on hover and show your ratings, uh, add to wish list, uh, quick, uh, quickly add items to cart. Basically. Any scenario that you have with product card, I'd be shocked if you couldn't use the out-of-the-box card component to meet those needs. But finally, there are times when you have to build your own components that are called molecules and organisms that are, on, that are more kind of the complex brand-specific stuff that you usually have to do that 
no UI library is meant to replace, but it's just meant to help you get to those faster. So um, a great way to start is to sometimes actually pull an SFUI component directly into your project and use it as a starting point when you can instead of building from scratch. Uh, and try to use atoms from the SFUI library instead of going and using base HTML comp components to make sure you have comp consistent styling, but also reduce the maintenance in long term. The entire SFUI component library is actually meticulously built out in Figma with customization first in mind. So using auto layout, variance, instance swapping, instance swapping, stuff like that. And spacers are reflected right within Figma. Uh, it's actually really easy to build new components for designers that are instantly familiar to developers that have used SFUI before, dramatically reducing the development time and also making developer handoff a whole lot easier. Since developers can go right into your Figma file, read your layers, and visualize the code that they need to write within that. Uh, so in this example here, uh, we can see on the left, we wanted to build out a BOPIS component, and we're able to use the SFUI store locator component as a starting point. We got rid of the image, uh, added just uh, store opening hours right below, and a button to add that product to our cart as a pickup item. So this was a great way to have a consistent experience without creating two dramatically different store views, store line item views between the store locator and the product detail page, but also creating a unique experience that wouldn't be part of any base theme. Um, and then also on the order history view, uh, we wanted to create a super detailed uh, kind of item view that's not part of the out of the box Capybara or VSF next theme. And to do that, we, were, we actually just use out of the box components like SF heading, collected product card, and SF buttons. So this means that we didn't have to worry about styling specific to this. And we're able to create a pixel perfect match pretty much between um, the design and the development. Um, and sys. And also just a quick tip, if you're working on using, if you're planning on using the built-in, um, uh, just a quick tip, if you're using one of the pre-built themes, uh, like Capybara on, Capybara on VSF1 or the default VSF Next theme, uh, I recommend going into the component folder and creating your own brand-specific folder first before you um, go any further so that you don't mix your components with the base components and just helps with maintenance and upgradability. Uh, before I close out, um, here are some quick fire tips for SFUI that will save you time and hopefully brain cells. Uh, first is SF button pure. Um, there were times when I want to take an SFUI component and put some kind of click action on it, but that's not supported out of the box. So luckily you can wrap anything in the SF button pure and it instantly becomes clickable. You can put any click action on it and you can also add button lifecycle hooks to any component that you, uh, you, that you wrap in it. Uh, second is performant box shadows. Uh, maybe you know this already, maybe you don't, but box shadows require a lot of repaints by your browser and hurts performance. So SFUI has a built-in mixin that gives that you can input traditional box shadow properties into, and it automatically generates a pseudo element for that box shadow. And using a before pseudo element dramatically reduces the amount of effort your browser has to put in to animate it. And not only does it create the element, but it also actually creates CSS variables that you can use later on in styling to apply your transitions and animations to without having to uh, think about calling the pseudo element in your CSS over and over again. A third super handy one is SAS breakpoints. Managing breakpoints uh, across a site is often painful and it requires checking, double checking, to make sure that you don't use the wrong values at different places. So SFUI has a great SAS helper called at include for desktop or for mobile and lets you set your mobile and desktop view sizes once and then use them across your entire theme for view spe uh, device specific styling. Uh, finally, finally uh, before I close out, here are a few pointers on how to get started with storefront UI. 
Both View Storefront and Storefront UI have their dedicated group chats where you can talk to the community, ask questions, and help others. Storefront UI is on Discord. You can find that link on the Storefront UI homepage. And VSF has um, a Slack group that you can talk about. Um, uh, that if you want, you can go there if you want to talk about how to use SFUI and VSF. Uh, you can find that link on the VSF homepage. Uh, secondly, for all the designers out there, uh, um, you can use the Figma file to build, play around, and customize SFUI in. Uh, the file is very extensive and pretty daunting at first. It actually takes a little bit to load too because it's so large. But there's also a YouTube series with examples on how to customize the file and best practices for developer handoff that should make it uh, easier and faster for you to kind of start using it and output some designs. Uh, lastly, if you want to learn more about why people are so into PWA and reasons to care, well, you're probably already interested in PWA if you're at the VSF Summit. But here's a, a short study we did on the state of mobile commerce in North America, in the North American fashion industry. Uh, check it out if you'd like just to understand why people are so interested in PWA and mobile commerce. Uh, yeah, so that wraps up. Uh, build faster with Storefront UI. Hopefully this motivated you to go check out Storefront UI and maybe even drive down your own development time and cost for your next e-commerce project. Uh, thank you, View Storefront, for having me and enjoy the rest of VSF Summit. Bye.